So in this video segment, like what I'd like to do is just simply walk through the creation of a circuit in Simulink. And we'll focus on the second example that we went through in the example section. And maybe a lot of you have used Simulink before, but I just wanted to kind of go through this um, and just kind of show how what we did in the MATLAB code would, would then map over to a tool like Simulink and talk a little bit about how this would differ with, with PSCAD. So anyway, uh, I, I got the slides in the slide setup shown on the right, and I'm just going to kind of follow along with that. Uh, that's also posted up in the Moodle site. And before you try to use Simulink, what I would do is I would make sure that you have the right toolboxes installed. Um, you don't necessarily get the the Simscape electrical that you need to do the power system elements. And so usually what I would do with the command line in MATLAB is I would check to see what modules I have installed. And what I typically do on my laptop is when you do the, the standard MATLAB install, it installs a lot of times everything, especially if you have the educational version. But I usually delete a lot of the toolboxes off my computer just to save space. So anyway, you can see we do have we do have Simscape electrical um, on our loaded on our machine, so we're we're okay in that regards. So to get things going, we'll start off by clicking on the Simulink icon, and what that'll do, it'll take a little bit of a time to load right here. Um, but what that'll do is that'll that'll pull up the Simulink start page. There's a lot of good examples already in Simulink, so if you click on examples, you can see all the different examples that are loaded on here. Um, if you wanted to, you can, you can kind of focus on examples that just kind of focus more on power system problems. So you can do a search through here and you can see other types of examples. But uh, a lot of times for a lot of the common interfaces that we want to develop, say like a PV interface or battery energy storage system interface. Um, there are examples, if they're not on the example page, and if you go up to the MathWorks site, sometimes somebody's loaded something up there as, as well. So if we want to start up a, a new model, then we just click on new, we select blank model, And what this is going to pull up, it's going to pull up the, the model canvas so we can actually draw a new circuit. Okay, so we have the model canvas loaded up. Let me go ahead and just expand this out a little bit. And in order to see what we can load on, you can go to the library browser. And what this will do, this will basically pull up all the different elements you can drag and drop on the canvas. Now what we're going to do, be doing is we're going to be making use of the Simscape electrical elements, especially the specialized power system elements. So if you go to Simscape and go to electrical, okay, these are all the different electrical items. And what we're going to do is we're going to make use of the specialized power system components, right? And you can see that we'll have controls and measurements, motor drives, fax devices, fundamental blocks, renewables, where most of the elements that we need are under fundamental blocks. Okay, so we'll select fundamental blocks. And um, you can see it's even broken down by sources, elements, machines, kind of similar to the way PSCAD has um, its models organized. Now, one thing we're going to need when we're doing these simulations is we're going to need to have the um, what we call power GUI on our screen. So let's just go ahead and make sure that that's um, loaded on. So I accidentally closed down the browser here. I've just got a little few too many little windows up right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and get Power GUI on here. 
And this is something that's kind of particular to this um, the power system block sets that we're going to be using. Basically what this does is this is, gives us functionality for doing different types of simulations. And so if you were going to open this up, if you were going to double click on this, you could see there's different solvers. So you can solve continuous, you can solve discrete, you can solve in phaser mode. Um, there's different types of tools which we can make use of. So you could do steady state analysis. Um, you could, if you have machinery, you can initialize the machines. If you're looking at waveforms due to power electronics, we can look at the frequency components using FFT analysis. Hysteresis design is used for transformers. There's a lot of different sort of tools that are kind of useful for different power system applications. So anyway, we don't have to worry about all this detail for, for now. All right. So let's go ahead and, and get a source on the circuit. So if I were going to open up the electrical library, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a voltage source to our canvas. Okay, so we got that on the screen. And then we go to the fundamental block elements. Need to go back one. And we look at um, elements. And what we can get out of here is we can get a breaker. We can also get ground ties. So instead of drawing this in a loop, we're just going to go ahead and make use of a ground in this case. So these two ground points would be connected together. And then we also need to have these resistance, inductance, and capacitance. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to go ahead and take this series RLC branch and put it in here twice. And I'm going to use the RLC branch to give me the resistance inductance. And I'm going to use the second RLC branch to give me the, the capacitance for the circuit. So anyway, we've drug these items from our menu. Uh, something else we can do here is we can also reorientate this uh, circuit breaker to make it a little bit easier to work with. So I'll do a clockwise rotation on this. And now we're at the point where we can connect everything up together. And so what we can do in this case is we just simply use the cursor. We left click on one connection point, we drag it to the next point. And so in here I could just simply left click. You see the when we're at a terminal, the cursor changes its symbol type. And basically what we can do is we can just connect these items all up together now. And now we got our circuit elements connected together. On the circuit breaker model, this little symbol right here is for an external control on the circuit breaker. Uh, unlike PSCAD, the circuit breaker has its own internal logic for setting up the timing and when the circuit breaker opens and closes. All right. Um, then what we can do is we can go ahead and we could set up the parameters. So open up, double click on the voltage source. We'll leave this at 100 volts. Now, what's interesting about the um, voltage source is that would nominally be of the type sine. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this to cosine by putting a phase shift in here. And then also, too, we said that we want the switching to occur um, with a point on wave of 60 degrees. So what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to add another 60 degrees. And the nice thing about the parameter expressions in MATLAB is you can make those equations. And so when we're in simulating, sometimes it's convenient to do it this way. It just makes it easier to, to change it later on. And I think I've got everything in here. So go ahead and click Apply and click OK, or you can just click OK. So for the other components, what I have... I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this to an RL element. So this is the resistance and the inductance. We have 40 ohms. 
we have 75 millihenries. Okay, so I can just put 75 here. Um, one thing you notice in here about Simulink is we could set initial values for current and voltage. So if I wanted to set the initial value for the current, I could do so. Where in PSCAD, what I have to do is I have to actually run the simulation and do some things with maybe turning breakers on and off in order to get the right initial values. The danger of this would be is if you were to put initial values on elements that are inconsistent and then the simulation could blow up. So anyway, um, these are the initial values that we're going to have for the resistance and inductance. Go to this second RLC element. I'll make this capacitance only. Make this 10 microfarads. Yeah, 10 microfarads. Again, you could set initial capacitor voltage if you want to. And then we get the to the settings for the circuit breaker. So for the circuit breaker, if we open this up, the initial status is zero, which means initially it's going to be closed. I'm sorry, initially it's going to be um, open. Um, as far as the breaker resistance, let's just go ahead and leave these at the um, values that we have. 0 0.01 is the on resistance. Uh, one mega ohm is the off resistance. And so let's suppose I had a circuit where my series resistance was um, 0 0.01. I would probably, my regular resistance was 0 0.01. I would probably want to make this resistance value a lot smaller where it didn't really change the results I was going to get in the circuit. So given that I've got a 40 ohm resistor, 0 0.01 is pretty small. But if I didn't have much resistance in the circuit, I might want to drop this value to make it smaller. Um, the other interesting thing to note about this model is it has what's called a snubber capacitance in there, so it actually could model some straight breaker capacitance. Um, so anyway, um, that's also in this particular model, and right now I have it set up where it switches off an external signal, but I can make that internal, and what I would be doing here is I would be putting in what I want for the switching time, let's just go ahead and make this switching time zero. Um, but if we wanted to make this so many cycles, we could just put in like 1 over 60 or 3 over 60. If we can want to do this on one cycle, three cycle basis. Okay, so it looks like we've got all these values in correctly now. So I can run the circuit now. If I were to click on this run, I could actually run the circuit and hopefully everything would um, execute correctly. The problem is, is I wouldn't be able to as easily see values, as like say, like the, the graphs that we have in PSCAD. So we need to add some measurements into our simulation circuit. And if we want to do this, one way we can do this is we can go and we can add if I go back, um, what I can do is I can go to measurements. I could put a current measurement in here. I could also put a voltage measurement in here. And let me flip this around and you'll see why later on we do something like this. And then we need to have a scope. And so in this case, what you need to do is need to go all the way back to the top, simulate commonly used blocks. And then what you need to do is you need to find a scope and drag a drop of scope onto the screen. Here we go. And then what you could do is you can specify the number of inputs. We want two inputs. Okay. And so now we now we got two inputs for the scope for the voltage and the current. All right. Now what we have to do is we have to connect these elements in. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to make a break in the circuit here, and then I'm going to connect this current source in series between the inductance and the capacitance. Then I'm going to link the current output. I guess I've got that in the second channel in my example. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take and make connections to the bottom and the top of this voltage source. All right. And then I'll make a connection from the voltage output over to channel number one. And I could just clean this up a little bit just to avoid some confusion. All right. And now I've got the measurements wired into the circuit. And then let's go ahead and set the stop time of the simulation to 0 0.05. Now, one other thing you would probably want to do is you would want to go and double check your modeling and basically um, make sure that you're using the right integration algorithm. We talked about this a little bit um, in the previous lecture that you have different types of integration solvers you could use and so in this case it's set to auto. However, you look at the relative tolerance in this case, and this relative tolerance isn't really that great, just 10 to the minus third. So let's go ahead and set this to um, 10 to the minus fifth, just to be on the safe side. And then now what we can do is we can run the simulation. And hopefully I don't get any nasty messages when I run this. And I just hear it beep and open up the scope window. And then here's my results. So obviously I got to do something on the scaling side. There's things you could do, break things into two charts, um, change you could you could change the, the vertical scale here, but uh, I'll let you guys read that on your own. So this is a very basic introduction to, to using Simulink. Um, in the notes, I got some references at the very end. Um, there's some wiki links in here. There's actually YouTube videos on using like ODE45 if you want to see a little bit more on that. And, and Simulink actually has quite a bit of documentation on not only how the base um, application works, but then the modeling components that we're going to use for, for power system components. And so um, there's a lot of stuff you can actually take a look at. Um, either you go up to the, the MathWorks site. And there's also a lot of material on, on YouTube as well. But what we're going to be focusing on more as far as um, Simulink in this class is, is basically using the specialized power system components. And you'll see it's especially handy when we're starting to look at the control of, of DER sources. So um, anyway, that's all for the, the Simulink um, introduction. And then what I'll be doing in the next lecture is talking in more detail about how programs like PSCAD works, specifically how they do the integration. All right, thank you.